Welcome back, and in this lesson, we will review the bridge loan calculation mechanics. The reason why we obtain the bridge loan is to bridge the gap between the date when we have to finance the capex and the date when we obtain the permanent financing. The permanent financing could be a loan or equity investment, and in our case, it will be an equity investment. And the reason why we need this loan is to increase the return of the equity because we are postponing the equity investment to the last construction period when the project is completed. So, let's get started with our bridge loan calculations. In this example, we've got seven construction periods, and then we've got a total capex of 400. We're assuming that all the capex will be financed by equity, and we are getting the bridge loan equal to 75% of equity investment that has to be made to the project. So, the bridge loan's initial value will be 400 times 75%. Next. We will model the bridge loan drawdown, and we will need the bridge loan committed opening balance, which we don't have yet. So, once we calculate it, we'll link it here. Next, we'll need the capex. Let's bring it from row 7. And the drawdown of the bridge loan will be the minimum of the loan's opening balance and the capex. In cell C16, we will take the sum of the bridge loan's drawdown. So, we've got the bridge loan drawdown, and now we can calculate the loan committed balance, which will depend on the loan's initial value that we've got in row 11. The loan's committed opening balance will equal the closing balance in the previous period. However, in the first period, it will be equal to the initial balance. This is not how we usually model the balances in our real model, but for this example, we will be using these shortcuts. Let's color it gray to indicate that the formula in this particular cell is different from the remaining cells in this row. The closing balance will be the opening balance, less the loan drawdown. And the opening balance is equal to the closing balance in the previous period. And let's bring the loan drawdown from row 15. Next, we have to link the loan's committed opening balance to loan drawdown calculations.
We've got the loan drawdown, and now we can model the loan repayment, which will depend on the loan drawn and the repayment flag that we already got on this worksheet. We can see that we are repaying the bridge loan in the last construction period. First, let's bring the loan drawn from row 16. and the loan repayment will be the loan drawn times the repayment flag. So, we've got the loan repayment, but now we can calculate the bridge loan balance that will be the balance that we owe to the lenders. And this balance will also be used to calculate the interest and the fee payments. So. The opening balance will equal the closing balance in the previous period. And the closing balance will be the opening balance plus the loan drawdown, and less the loan repayment. Let's bring the loan drawdown, which we could take from row 20. And let's bring the loan repayment that we've just calculated in row 25. So, we've got the loan balances, and we will not be using these loan balances in this example. We're just showing you how to calculate it. However, you will have to use it to calculate the interest and fees that need to be paid on the loan. And finally, we have to calculate the equity investment, which will depend on the remaining capex in the bridge loan repayment. First, let's calculate the remaining capex, and let's bring the capex from row 14. And let's bring the bridge loan drawdown, which we could take from row 28. And the remaining capex will be our initial capex, less the bridge loan drawdown. And the equity investment will be the minimum of the available equity in the sum of the remaining capex and bridge loan repayment. So, this is how we incorporate the bridge loan into our real model. And also, you have to calculate the bridge loan fees and interest.